Blue Beetle DC's Worst Nightmare, Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Infinite Crisis Comic Explored. Crisis. The word itself is enough to invoke images of wonder and terror in the minds of DC fans. On the one hand, a crisis event has us salivating at the prospect of epic crossovers and never seen before team ups. Superman joining forces with other Supermen to take down the mighty Anti Monitor? Yes, please. Dark Side zapping Bruce Wayne into prehistoric Earth? We'll have more of that. But perhaps the biggest crisis level event before Scott Snyder's Dark Knight's Death Metal has to be the Infinite Crisis. Crisis, which saw the remnants of destroyed multiverse which tries to restore itself to its former glory and die in a process. This event was crucial because it marked the reintroduction of the multiverse, well kind of anyway, and though Alex Luthor's reality warping vision quest ultimately ended up failing, it could have been stopped before it ever gathered any momentum by the most unlikely of heroes, Blue Beetle. Ted Kord's gruesome murder was the catalyst of a series of events that reshaped DC continuity, but what if he had hadn't died. What if, instead of being ignored like he had been so far, Ted Court decided he needed to act? And what if his actions led to the destruction of an entire universe? Those are the questions we will be answering in this video. This is Tales from the Dark Multiverse Infinite Crisis Explored. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Universe Unmade, Multiverse Reborn, How Blue Beetle Uncovered the Original Infinite Crisis. Although, we keep talking about the significance of Infinite Crisis, what exactly happened during the event itself? We'll break it down for you. See, in the 1980s, DC came up with a massive crossover event for all of its creations dubbed Crisis on Infinite Earths. During this event, the Anti-Monitor sought to remake the multiverse in his own image, but he was thwarted by the combined might of the JSA and JLA, especially their respective supermen. But the fall of such a cosmic entity is bound to have ripple effects, and Anti-Monitor Monitor's death caused the multiverse to fold in on itself and ball up into a single positive matter universe with the antimatter universe below it. Because every other Earth that wasn't the central Earth was destroyed, while multiversal survivors from this event were sent into a pocket dimension meant to represent heaven, instead they bore witness to what they deemed to be hell. Kal-El and Lois Lane of Earth 2, Alexander Luther of Earth 3, and Superboy Prime from Earth Prime all saw the effects of the crisis unfold on this new Earth and decided that it needed to be culled from existence. To that end, Alex Luther devised the infamous cosmic tuning fork and intended to trap the superheroes of this new universe to recreate the perfect Earth. But he ends up proving that Lex Luthor can never be good on any world and betrays his comrades by revealing his scheme to recreate the multiverse. In the end, Alex's plan fails and he's shot in the head by New Earth's Lex Luthor, while Superboy Prime goes on a rampage that kills Earth's two Superman and cements him as the craziest DC supervillain ever. But all of this could have been avoided if the Justice League had listened to one of their lesser comrades. For an entire week, Ted Kord had been investigating seemingly random random instances that, when taken together, revealed a horrifying cosmic master plan, stolen money and kryptonite deposits, cryptic meetings with Shazam, the onset of a war between Rand and Thanagar, and the fact that someone was after his own life. Blue Beetle was elusive and intelligent enough to keep his tracks clear and locate the earthly source of these disturbances his old friend and new black king of checkmate, Maxwell Lord. Lord confronts Max about his plans and is offered the choice to either join him or die. Ted chooses the latter and has his most iconic comic book moment when he tells his former friend to rot in hell before getting shot in the head. If Batman or Martian Manhunter or even Wonder Woman had taken Blue Beetle seriously when he came to them with the information he had, they could have helped him stop any of this from happening but they kept treating him like a second string and he paid for it with his life. At least that is in a positive matter universe. Things played out very differently in the dark multiverse and it was absolutely for the worst. Once you kill a man, there's no going back. The day Ted Cord changed forever. Tales from the Dark Multiverse Infinite Crisis begins, as all of these issues do with Tempest of the Fuginauts scouring the lifeless domain of a ray of hope. He peers within the Dark Multiverse hoping against hope that he could find some hero 
here that would help him prevent the crisis about to unfold in the realms above. This time, he had turned his eyes to a universe that truly knew the meaning of a crisis event, one where the Anti-Monitor had been slain and Alex Luther's machinations to reforge the multiverse were in full effect. Tempest could warn the heroes of this world of the coming darkness if he wanted to, but he didn't because he didn't need to. You see, in this world, instead of facing his death like a real man for the first time in his life, Blue Beetle truly felt like a bug. Maxwell Lord's Omax were too strong for someone like him to tackle head on, and Ted Kord felt the full weight of the futility of his fight for the first time. It looked like he was about to give up and embrace his fate here as well, albeit it'd be much more tragic death considering he was berating himself at the end. Only this doesn't end up happening. As Blue Beetle reflects on his second string status, he tries to tell himself that he did it so he wouldn't have as much blood on his hands. But now, as he creeps closer to his own demise, he realizes that he was out of his depth. He had severely overestimated himself and was now paying the price Batman had always said he would. And as Maxwell Lord gloated about always knowing that Ted would be the one to find him and offering him a place in a checkmate as his equal, Blue Beetle finally realized what he had to do. His whole life, he had avoiding taking direct actions because there would be direct consequences as a result of them which he had been too bothered to deal with in the past. Not anymore. Ted had worked too hard and lost too much to uncover the infinite crisis conspiracy and he simply couldn't turn away now. He faked the joining checkmate so that Max would release him and then proceeded to kill him in cold blood, breaking his oath of never taking a life. As soon as he did this, Brother One sprang into action and tried to initiate the King is Dead protocol, which would have spelled this disaster for Earth's metahuman population. But something about his coding system gave Ted Kord an idea that would seal his fate as a man who no longer cared about being a small fish in the ocean. The Black King's Crusade of Justice Blue Beetle starts fixing the universe. Killing Max effectively made Ted the new Black King of Checkmate, and with all of his new toys, he couldn't sit behind and let the universe tear itself apart. So, he got to work. Blue Beetle used Brother One to track down the stream of black money flowing out of Checkmate and Cord to a secret society, more specifically, Lex Luthor's secret society of supervillains. Cord is able to cut off their resources by having Brother I hack their seemingly impenetrable systems. He also notices the Secret Six tracking Luther's organization and puts them under his direct employ, giving him his own team of superheroes. Next, he stops Jing Loring from acquiring the Heart of Darkness, which contains within its powers of Eclipso, thereby thwarting the former spirit of vengeance from seducing the specter and destroying every magical being in the cosmos. Ted Kord travels to the Rock of Eternity in this universe as well, but not by mistake. Instead, it's by choice. He communes with the wizard Shazam and figures out a way to stop the specter's mindless rampage. After doing that, he uses Omac technology and Zeta beams to stop the Ranthanagar war before it even begins. At present, his teams are pursuing the mysterious figure spawn Sponsoring the secret society who was known only by his codename, Mockingbird. Ted Kord basically manages to solve every threat that the universe faces in the lead up to the infinite crisis, gaining unprecedented footage in the intergalactic community. And these developments highly disturb Batman who was hearing all of it from the mouth of one of Blue Beetle's most devout followers. Bruce being a high and mighty snob he is tells us contact that this is the priority because he doesn't think Ted Kord of all people should have this much power and that he will bring it up with the league. That's when Blue Beetle steps out of the shadows and basically threatens Bruce to leave him alone while hinting that it was his darkness that gave Brother One sentience in the first place. Batman rejects this theory and insists that there is foul play involved but Blue Beetle has been ridiculed and trampled upon enough for one lifetime. He gives Bruce an ultimatum. He would either let Ted fight this war his way or risk getting his secret identity exposed to the world. Only with Beetle, it will come with the receipts. Batman is forced to retreat as Blue Beetle continues his crusade of justice. Goals achieved and relationships destroyed. Ted Kord's apotheosis. Since becoming Checkmate's Black King, Ted Kord has become a busy man. At any given point, he is coordinating between six to 10 strike forces and monitoring all the peace deals he helped negotiate all in the name of the greater good. In fact, so absorbed by his newfound purpose as Blue Beetle that it's the only reason he contacted his closest friend, Booster Gold. We'll give some quick context. Before infiltrating Checkmate's HQ, 
Ted's home was blown up and Booster was badly injured in the incident. And after he became the Black King, he just never returned. Booster went to the JLA Watchtower to demand answers from the League as to why they weren't looking for their comrade, but all he got was the same lame excuse that the Trinity gives to small fries like them. He stormed off telling them that whatever Ted Court did next would be on their heads and little did any of them know just how true those words would ring in just the near future. At the present, though, Ted is trying to get the band back together. He wants to put together Team Blue and Gold for one last adventure. All Booster has to do is help him find Mockingbird, like the good old days. But Michael can see that his best friend Theodore is no longer the man he once knew, and he refuses saying Beetle can handle it himself. Dejected and enraged, Cord zeroes in on the location of Mockingbird and attacks it with his secret six only to find everyone dead. Turns out the Mockingbird signal was coming from Lex's armor and someone had ripped Black Adam in half. The very next instant, Blue Beetle's unit is massacred by Superboy Prime and Alexander Luther reveals himself as the mastermind of everything that had happened. He invites Ted to check out his massive anti-monitor themed tuning fork and informs him of his plans to recreate the multiverse but to his utter astonishment, Blue Beetle turns the tables on him. He cleverly manipulated Superboy Prime into turning over to his side by telling him that if he, a second string, can accomplish all this, then Prime doesn't need Luther to create the perfect Earth. Luther kills Kal-El and Lois, while Superboy kills Luther, and now Prime and Blue Beetle are left with a multiversal tuning fork size problem on their hands. But Ted Court knows just what to do with it, and if he wants to save the universe and make it perfect, he's going to need Superboy's help. The pair agree to help each other, and Prime deposits the tuning fork at Checkmate HQ. They think they're going to save lives. Little did they know, they are about to doom their entire reality. Ted Kord becomes Brother Blue Beetle, the evil biochemical god of this universe. After reaching base, Kord requests Brother One to interface itself with the tuning fork because he has a plan. Everything he has done so far has been in service preventing the next crisis. He has forsaken his ideals, his closest friends, his family for this. So you can imagine how horrified he must have been when Brother One reveals to him that the cause for the next crisis event are the very heroes who fight to defend the world, with the chief cause being the Justice League. League. Ted Kord argues with the AI, stating the League's case on their behalf even after being treated like a second fiddle his entire life, but in his drive to prove himself worthy of being an A-list hero, he seemed to have forgotten that it was Alexander Luther who gave Brother One his sentience and that in the end, Batman was right and his AI had been severely compromised. But it was too late to do anything about it now because in his bid to prove himself correct, Ted Kord had taken the final steps towards giving in to his own malice. First, he instructed Superboy Prime to attack his counterpart from this Earth and then move on to the Teen Titans. Second, he integrated the Anti-Monitor's cosmic armor with the OMAC nanobots and then infused the end product with himself, thus becoming Brother Blue Beetle, a cyborg worse than Cyborg himself. Using his newfound mechanical body and his technopathic powers, Beetle infiltrates a Trinity meeting and attacks them. Batman taunts him saying that he can't defeat him with his level of power, but Ted points out that he's here to recruit, not destroy. Suddenly, the OMAC nanobots encase the Trinity's bodies as Blue Beetle reveals that he had reconfigured them to meet each individual JLA member's genetic code, thus ensuring complete servitude. Court then checks in with Superboy Prime, but turns out he's going against his orders and is using lethal force. Ted turns him into an OMAC bot as well due to that betrayal. After doing this, he instructs his legion to assimilate all metahumans on Earth as quickly and bloodlessly as possible, but he's confronted by the one person he could always rely on, Booster Gold. Michael pleads with Ted to stop his madness, but when that doesn't work, he threatens to kill him, at which point Blue Beetle's self-aware armor blasts a hole in Booster's chest working to protect its wearer. Maddened by grief and rage, Ted Court allows Brother One to kill his emotional sinners in order to accomplish his mission on a much more rapid scale. But it's all for nothing in the end. As soon as Ted Court gives up control, Brother One switches his legion from assimilation to lethal sanctions and immediately attempts to take over the world. After an unknown amount of time has passed, we see Ted Court strapped to a chair at the Checkmate HQ, seemingly serving as the nucleus of Brother One's AI high Mind. He reminisces that he had always been a bug, but he used to feel angry about that. Now, connected to his OMAC brothers and sisters, he felt freer than he ever had. The last full page spread to the tales of the dark multiverse shows Brother
another blue beetle hovering over the ravaged field of battle with dead gods at his feet and dead gods falling from the skies, declaring that finally he was in control and this time there was no one who could take it away from him. Well, no one in this corner of the dark multiverse anyway. Why Dark Multiverse Blue Beetle is DC's worst nightmare. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Aaron Eckert's Two-Face might have said this line, but the person who truly embodies this concept is Ted Kord from the Dark Multiverse. Emboldened by the fact that he was doing something much bigger than the petty squabbles he had been solving as part of the Justice League International, he grew arrogant, and his arrogance bred ignorance. In the Positive Matter universe, Blue Beetle was a scrumptious detective, no matter how hard he was ridiculed. Here, though, he let the most important detail about his closest ally slip through his mind, and it ended up costing humanity its very existence. Blue Beetle set out to protect the multiverse when he first stumbled across the Infinite Crisis conspiracy. In death, he was remembered as a martyr by the world above. And perhaps that was for the best, because in life, his ego and confidence only led to the destruction of everything he held near and dear to him, including himself. So with that being said, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.